Hey there, camel friends! Welcome back to Easter Napali, our official Planet Coaster series at the moment. It's a new episode, it's Friday, weekend ahead, so the best time for you to sit back, relax and enjoy today's episode where we made a huge progress on the lock flume. So, enjoy now! Alright, as you might have seen, there is a new intro, which I think I'll keep. It's just a very nice little intro to get you welcome in Eastern Pali. And I think I'm gonna just change it a little bit uh, after we've done some other stuff. But for the moment, I feel like this is the best idea. I think the idea that we are going to recap the last episode was nice for a time, but I feel like it's time to move on. If you see that uh, differently though, let me know in the comments down below and so I can, uh, as always, try to improve myself uh, according to that. Because as you might be able to tell from uh, the background music, again that's something a lot of people have been moaning about, uh, the music became very repetitive. I looked into it and uh, I couldn't agree more, so I searched for some new music, which um, was already here in last week's episode, but I feel like not too many people saw that one, so um, yeah, at least I should say for those who haven't seen this one, uh, yeah. Also, this episode is the first episode where we are using the new pieces from the Ghostbusters DLC, and I have to say, man, this is insane. There's like so much usable stuff for Isna Pali, it couldn't be more crazy. It's like, really, like, we used a lot of stuff, for example, this wall over here, a lot of things that really fit into the into the theme of Napali, into, you know, using those pieces. And I, I do also have a topic which I want to talk about a bit later in today's video, which is a bit more about um, how the UGST approach in Planet Coaster turns out to be working. But before we do so, I really want to ask you guys something again, which uh, is super important for me personally to know. Um, I I looked into it quite a bit recently and um, you always know about the notifications on, on YouTube. And uh, again, as a disclaimer, because I feel like I always have to, to tell that, um, it, it's again, no complaining at all. It's just pure informative now. I really want to know how many of you have for once turned on the notification on my channel and also, secondly, who even turned on the bell icon so that you get the notifications uh, always because it's, uh, again, a, a difference of, of subbing and having the bell activated. And then the more important question over here is how many of you actually do get the notifications? Because as I already explained to most of you, I have some test accounts. I have a lot of friends, like real life friends that do have my YouTube channel uh, subscribed to. They don't really watch my videos, but um, I ask them every now and then uh, if they get the notifications and they very rarely say yes. So I have one who's the brother of my uh, wife. He basically gets every notification, but he's really an excuse. So I really want to understand how many of you who have activated the notifications, obviously, um, actually do get them. Because I also get a lot of uh, people in the comments that complain that they didn't get one, especially in the last month where I was putting out constantly an episode a day. Again, this is another topic, just uh, to bring that in quickly before I talk about what we're actually doing. Um, I was thinking about changing my upload schedule a tiny bit, so what I felt like works pretty good in the last couple of days is um, to stuff the... Or actually to, to put episodes out a bit closer to each other on one day and then have a little bit of a break to get you guys a little bit uh, a chance to catch up on stuff and then, you know, another day having more episodes again. So my idea was basically to, to try and fill the weekend as much as possible because that's the time where you guys obviously also have time. Um, and then within the week just to choose maybe for two days where I put out as many episodes as possible. So I'm talking of a max of two, I guess, but it's just, you know, I, I just wanted to pretend that I'm also, you know, only trying to upload what is really ready to be uploaded. But if so, I don't want to put them on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, whatever, maybe then just having two on Monday and two on Wednesday and then just, you know, wait again until weekend. I feel like it's a better idea because you guys have the chance to watch two videos at one day, which is good, because if you just stepped in and you're already doing it, that's kind of, you know, uh, already pretty handy for you. 
and if not, you at least have a little bit of time to catch up on episodes before then there is the next stuff coming. And also it gives me the time to also prepare the videos a bit more in advance so that makes the editing for me a bit easier because sometimes, as today for example, I have a day of only recording. I will record now a few episodes um, of uh, various things and then I am I'm I'm good to edit them and this actually takes like two three hours to, to make them already so this day is basically only for editing and no gaming at all whilst tomorrow or so I'm more looking into streaming again and, and doing my actual recording bit so I'm, I'm just kind of you know shifting that from one day to the other and so uploading each and every day kind of kind of destroys that schedule a bit which I noticed last month anyhow let's talk a little bit about what uh, about what we are doing so Again, my aim is to improve stuff according to what you guys have been saying and I felt like you guys have been pre-bought by the wooden coaster, which to be honest I can totally understand. Uh, not that I got bought, but I can imagine that after like six episodes only in one area you really want to see something new, right? Something. Yeah, that kind of um, moves the whole project forward, which is, I think is a fair bit to say that this is also an approach of doing it. And in today's episode we are tackling the area of the uh, lock flume and again something that you guys mentioned is that you guys are happy to see the progress and since a lot of you also said that you know a live stream could also be a good thing to record whilst having your input we exactly did this last monday which was again a super awesome stream um a lot of you guys have been there and uh yeah i think the cool bit about this is that i can always ask for your opinion and we can talk about in this video today about why i have done certain things the way i have done them so for once I wanted to make sure that the layout is changed according to what you guys said. So as you can see, the, the improvement of the layout was, I think many of you also commented that on the last video. Um, I could easily read out a few of them. Uh, you know what, let's just do that. Uh, because I feel this will also help to understand why we did that. Let me just grab my phone, totally not prepared. Um, <laughs> but I think this should be uh, a good idea because that always makes things a bit more uh, tangible for you guys and uh, it also makes uh, things more obvious why a decision was made and, and why not. So if I go into last episode, we have a lot of uh, comments here and um, there we go. So there we go. For example, we have Patrick Hefner. He said, looks a lot better now, but I would uh, do not put the lift hill directly after the big splash. I think that kills a little bit the momentum from the highlight of the ride. I would rather have a curve at uh, the curve after the drop in the same level than I would go with the track inside of theming element, then have the lift maybe as a last storytelling surprise element for the riders. Um, and this kind of happened here exactly like this because um, we uh, managed to squeeze that in now to a little bit further out without actually making the whole layout even more spread out, which is a good thing, I guess. And then we have also uh, Kivian de Jong, who also said, yeah, sorry, Rudy, but the second splash section needs to be longer. Maybe try to make the drop start earlier and get the turn below. I didn't want to make the drop earlier, so I think the solution we worked out in this episode is basically what we want to go for. Um, then we have uh, Rob Smith who said, I like the lock room redesign, however, my OCD would make me readjust the second lift hill so its railing doesn't intersect with the adjacent flume, um, which we've done a little bit here, um, to be honest, um, but we will do this even more in the future, so I can already approve that this is uh, a good thing. And then we have DJ Basex, for example, who also said, I would make the splash section longer and move the lift after the curve. Basically, I did that, uh, which is a good thing to do. And um, yeah, I, I think that's pretty cool. And then we have a comment from Nick S. Point, S. Dot, I don't know, S. Full Stop. He said, um, Rudy, where did you plant the nuclear power plant? I think we're gonna do a lot with uh, solar energy and also like with wave energy, but this is something we're going to tackle a bit later. Um, but he also said, for the lock room, the raised parts that now going over the splash and begin the drop, uh, beginning of the drop can be raised so it fits the surface of the mountain. Actually, we didn't really do this. As you have seen, I, I built somewhat of a second layer, which is also integrated into the mountain. Um, that kind of uh, is the beginning of the station area. I feel like that's a cool thing to have because 
Again, a few episodes back, people were complaining about the fact that we can't have that many boats on the right, so because the, the lift hill was way too close to the station, which I fully agree with. And we also had no maintenance area, which um, is now not here yet, but it will be located um, just below the splash, the, the big splash. Um, we will have a little shed that goes uh, right into the mountain, where uh, in kind of a bunker form, again, this is what I try to incorporate here. This could be also the second area of the park where a second World War bunker has been placed, and this is then reused into a lock flume area. I think that's, that's kind of the bit here. Um, however, so I, I did already say that at the beginning of the episode. I think we have to talk about how the UGC still is a part of uh, Eastern Nepali. Because as you might have seen, I haven't used too many UGC pieces for the last couple of episodes. Which is for a good reason. Um, I, let me just quickly explain that to you. So, for once, me doing 3D modeling is still a big fun for me. Honestly, I've done a lot of 3D modeling in the meantime, but only for myself. I've been 3D printing a lot, I've been doing some stuff for friends, I've been, you know, I've, I've, I've done a lot of stuff in 3D, but kind of didn't have the motivation to go the full way to do it for Planko, because if you do something and then there's an update which kind of uh, gives you the same stuff in a certain different way, whatever, it kind of, you know, takes away the amount of work you put in there. I don't know, it's still good, but it's um, kind of exhausting. However, people are still creating great stuff on the workshop, but there is still a little bit of a quality issue here. So it's not that big of a deal as many people have feared at the very beginning. However, you can clearly tell that there are some really good creators out there, that there are some very average creators out there, and this is perfectly timed, by the way. I have this example over here where I wanted to put the wonderful RC-controlled uh, boat tour uh, in here, which then would be refunctioned into a water cannon. This was, by the way, also a nice idea from the stream. However, it appeared that this uh, model is modeled pretty well, to be honest, but the, the texturing is just awful. It doesn't really fit the Planko style, so I don't want to have that. And my point is, I'm trying to make here, I kind of moved back from my early hype of using all the UGC pieces, which I still will do in this, this, this whole series, and this is still meant to be used like that, and we will definitely search for new awesome stuff. And if you guys want to come up with stuff, I, I basically, I'm, I'm really willing to use this. However, Building with Sylph and Operator, for example, on uh, Staliva and building on Planet Raw did kind of show me that the real fun of the game is breaking the game with its own capabilities and with its own pieces, rather than having all these weird UGC pieces. I don't know how to explain that, to be honest. It, it kind of makes me more satisfied to say that I all kind of achieved that in the way it is achieved in the game. and. A DLC with um, that many awesome pieces like Ghostbusters now, holy shit, that gives me again the idea of how good the game became over the course of time without having UGC. And in all honesty, if there would be a bigger boost in the UGC area, and there are also some kind of uh, process problems here, which is uh, down to the fact that people can't create sets, they can only create a single item, which obviously can't be put together in a Steam collection, but they kind of, you know, they, you do need to put even more effort in, and it's, it's kind of unnecessary effort, and so it, it kind of didn't get the hype it would have deserved. And this is my point I'm, I'm trying to make here. It's not big enough to be really a big deal, so it will still be a small part of Eastern Nepali, but the focus will definitely go more back to the original style of playing Planko. However, the only thing I'm really trying to incorporate here is the way how I can handle the FPS better, so let's say if there is some stuff I am, where there is a need to create that with a million pieces, for example, for a small lamppost or whatever, I'm definitely going to use UGC instead, because that simply would not fry my computer, and that's a good thing, I guess. Yeah, well, I think there's enough I talked about in today's episode. We are again at the end of today's episode. I will put in some glamour shots now. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. You will see the full glory of what we've created in a few bits. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think about this episode. And let me know what you are hoping to see next. And yeah, see you next time, guys. Enjoy your day. Make sure to also click that like button if you like the episode. And also make sure to click also the subscribe button if you like this channel and want to see more of it. So to see you again in the future on my channel. Until then, have a great time and bye guys.